We couldn't welcome you to Atlanta without stating that our most famous, famous resident preached the message of peace, love, hope, and nonviolent social change that still resonates around the world today. This is a time for bold leadership that is guided by a universal aspiration and tied to time-tested principles and values that form the basis of our common humanity. The Global Peace Convention 2012 in Atlanta is bringing together our worldwide network of peace builders, educators, faith leaders, civic leaders, all discussing the ways in which we can work together toward the accomplishment of the vision of building one family under God. It's really exciting to see that this is something that's not just going on inside Atlanta or the United States, that this is a global um, epidemic, um, but then also that we have people from all over the country, all over the world, that's on hand, on deck, willing to try to solve these problems. The most inspiring thing that I, uh, I see uh, since I've been here, and then you talk about the moral uh, leadership and then uh, the unification of the two Koreas that is really something that is striking me and then something that I know that is feasible. We must share and we must really pay the price of the peace that we enjoy across this globe because it is that peace that brings us all together really as one family under God. With our common cause and shared commitment, we can make clear and substantial impact around the globe. Uh, 18 former presidents are gathering, they're forming what's called the Latin American uh, Presidential Mission. And uh, it's an initiative that started off from uh, the Global Peace Foundation, uh, and it's going to expand, and it's going to work for, you know, uh, North-South uh, integration and development. The idea, it's not only through democracy and the free market system that, that you can change, uh, that can bring a positive change, but actually these have to come together with the proper uh, values and principles as an uh, underlying foundation. We ensure democracy for all the people and the future generations. We contribute to grow economic growth for our country and for the people, and certainly we finish the confrontation and establish democracy and peace in our country. When we examine the world situation today, uh, one of the most pressing issues is the continued uh, basis of conflict uh, that comes from differences in religion and ethnic backgrounds. Uh, particularly rooted in religious differences. Interfaith leaders are very important nowadays because people listen to them. People trust in them. We need to build partnership among all of us. Yeah? And, and particularly, we need to, to uh, turn down all the forces such as uh, religion and the, that, uh, in a way, uh, are setting us apart because we all share common values. For many years, I asked myself, what is interfaith? What does it mean? In this weekend, I found the answer. And it is so simple. It includes just four simple words. One family under God. One family under God. Mothers are equipped with knowledge on peace and skills on peace building. Will they be able to mold the minds and thinking uh, of her children and also shape the character of her children to love peace, to practice peace, and to impact peace to others through their lives? As the heart of the home, women must not forget their roles as natural leaders in the family educating the next generation as the moral leaders of tomorrow and exemplifying the culture of peace through the power of true love. This is a breakthrough for this 21st century 
that we fully acknowledge that women are better change agents. What do you say when somebody asks you to participate in helping to create world peace? Yes. Yes, that's all you can say. You have no choice. You have to say yes. We are the ones who make it brighter today. So let's start giving. Another important outcome from our convention relates to the International Young Leaders Assembly component. Uh, in that case, we are, have gathered international uh, representatives from our chapters, young leaders from here in the U.S., from around the world, and have had a number of important uh, components within this convention, working with partners like the Points of Light Institute and the King Center uh, to provide special training uh, to, to young leaders who will go back to their nations and across the coming year uh, work on innovative service initiatives. Change is hard, but peace is possible, and we can make it happen. If there's anything that I can do at Atlas for to support the work that you're doing, please let me know. And let's work together to create that world that we believe in. Because it's not just going to happen on its own, and it's not going to happen with those who are older and wiser and wealthier than us. It's going to happen from us. You know, youths are a very important factor in peace building in any country, in any organization. Because they are very vulnerable in terms of how they're being used. They have to be educated in terms of, you know, uh, in terms of building, uh, bringing about peace in their respective countries. And uh, that is why we are here. We do really need a collective impact approach to really address the, the, the social issues in front of us and also particularly the issues of education. It's a complex problem raising young people, educating them, and the solution has, is also has to be more encompassing and to get all of these different sectors working together to positively impact these young people. The honorees that, that receive this prestigious award are men and women who have, who have demonstrated over many years uh, their important dedication and outstanding accomplishments uh, in these areas of endeavor. If you share a smile, you are happier. If you share your knowledge, you are more knowledgeable. If you share fortune, you are richer. It's a great honor and privilege to be here in this gathering of great minds from government and civil societies, which is timely. A unique opportunity for all of us to collaborate with each other on today's challenges of peace building and sustainable development. I want to just thank uh, the Global Peace Foundation for really having the vision to bring the diverse cultures together. I don't know of any other organization that's done this in the way that you've, you've done it. Uh, and that really speaks to the issues of families. You see, this is our duty and this is our responsibility as being torchbearers. And now that we've had this opportunity to share together, we are torchbearers to carry the message of peace to all the four corners of the world. I earnestly believe if my father were living today, his heart would be warmed by the work of this great organization around the world. And in fact, I believe without a shadow of a doubt, he would be a part of your, your group. What, uh, what is really the, at essence in terms of what the Global Peace Foundation is working on and addressing uh, is how do we bring this world together? Uh, and that starting point for that is our vision of one family under God. Our key contribution in this area 
is to say that is, is to bring attention to the fact that principles and values are the central basis upon which we can bring, build cohesion and, and bring reconciliation uh, in critical issues around the world. Let us make a solemn pledge to expand this dream to all people and lead the world to peace through the vision of one family under God.